We've identified nine separate crime scenes. Shots fired, shots fired. Some guy ran in our house bleeding everywhere. Uh, he said he got run over by a car. I gave him CPR for 10 minutes before the paramedics showed up. Hey, Elliot Roger here. You know, I never really heard him speak. He didn't talk. I mean, uh... We didn't see this coming at all. I just don't know why this happened to our son. I've been doing a lot of thinking about how sad and unfair my life has been. You forced me to suffer all my life. And that will make you all suffer. Well... This is my last video. I've waited a long time for this. To catch a killer. Six UC Santa Barbara students killed. Over a dozen more were injured. All at the hands of this 20 year old. Someone who even his closest friends described as broken from the moment of conception. I think he's a really lonely guy. Are mass murderers born or are they made? To try and understand the case of Elliot Rogers, we must start from the very beginning. I wish I could be a kid again. In 1991, Elliot Roger was born in London, England, to Mother Lai Chin, a Malaysian Chinese nurse, and Father Peter, a commercial and film director. The shy child would later consider those early years the happiest of his life. Yet even then, there were warning signs of trouble to come. My parents used to always take me here when I was a kid. Back in my life was happy and fair. Elliot was highly literate, yet almost preternaturally quiet and would often write down what he wanted to say instead of speak it. While he was never officially diagnosed, this is a symptom of selective mutism, a rare childhood anxiety disorder in which sufferers find themselves unable to speak in social situations. When Elliot was six, Peter moved the family to Los Angeles. When his parents divorced just one year later, it was another massive change for the already fragile boy. Even at such a young age, it would prove an insurmountable trauma. Within a year, his father married Moroccan actress Sumeya Akaburn, triggering jealousy in young Elliot. He idealized his father's wealth and power as tools to attract the women of his dreams. You'll later realize just how dangerous this idea that money alone could attract any women you wanted would be. Back when I thought the world was fair, how naive I was. I was only an innocent child. Elliot had few friends, and when play dates would be arranged, he would simply wander off to bedrooms or the backyard to be alone. He hated sharing and would become irrationally angry when forced to do so. In the rare cases he'd make a friend, he'd become possessive of them and jealous if they played with anyone else. I am so angry right now. I was enjoying a peaceful time at this beach park. And what comes to sit in front of me? A young couple, a guy with his hot girlfriend. I mean, who do they think they are? Coming here, sitting in front of me to make me feel jealous? As he moved into his middle school years, he continued to struggle to make friends. He became an object of ridicule, including to one girl in particular, who would mock him in front of her group of friends. By his own telling, it would be the start of a lifetime hatred for what he referred to as the female species. His father, Peter, was a Hollywood insider who worked on major productions, including as assistant director on The Hunger Games, and afforded his son a front row seat to the industry. Elliot would later describe this as being a key factor in his jealousy. Even at that young age, his shallow ideology of wealth and privilege was beginning to form. My little nine-year-old self realized that there were hierarchies that some people were better than others. Jealousy and envy. Those are two feelings that would dominate my entire life and bring me immense pain, he wrote. The Rogers moved Elliot from school to school, hoping to find a fit for the increasingly isolated and bullied child. I've been cast out. No one likes me. No one accepts me. All my life I've been struggling to fit in with the popular kids. I've been struggling to get a girlfriend. No one. No one has ever accepted me. The Rogers tried homeschooling around this time, which only exacerbated his social anxiety. Finally, in 2009, he graduated from the small, 100-student Independence High. He had no real plans. Elliot attended several different colleges, including Pierce Community College, where he continued to be harassed. One day, a group of students threw eggs at him. He reacted by brandishing a knife. No one was harmed, but it was clear. Elliot was reaching his breaking point. He eventually enrolled at Santa Barbara City College. 
The campus sits right along the Pacific Ocean. The skies are blue and clear more days of the year than not, and his parents thought the sunshine and college life would help their introverted son come out of his shell. Tomorrow is my first day at a new college, Santa Barbara City College. I'm feeling anxious and worried about it, but also excited. With a new college comes many new opportunities, a chance to start fresh. I'll just go in with hopes and smiles and hope for the best. But instead, the happy college setting in a natural paradise only confounded his misery. His isolation intensified and his anger began to grow at a rapid pace. I'm so scared about what I might possibly see there. A young couple, hot girls walking with hot douchebag guys, a guy kissing his hot girlfriend. Such sights will break my heart, tear all my soul, stab my ego, consume me with rage. I'll just have to try not to concentrate on them, pretend they don't exist. By 2011, Elliot had stopped attending class and was slipping further into the grips of his hate. What comes to sit in front of me? A young couple, a guy with his hot girlfriend. I mean, who do they think they are? Coming here, sitting in front of me to make me feel jealous? This is the reason why I hate the world. Everywhere I go, I'm all alone. Because Elliot chose to document his degrading mind in real time and upload it to YouTube, in hindsight his actions, while not inevitable, were shockingly predictable. Ever since I hit puberty, I've wanted girls, I've desired girls, I've been really attracted to girls, but they've never shown any attraction back to me. It's fair to say that Elliot hated the entire human race, but most of all, he hated himself. Another month has gone by now, and I made a huge effort this month, but still, nothing. How long can I keep doing this? How much torture and humiliation can I take from the world? He had particular antipathy for women for never showing any interest in him. They never paid any attention to me. They talked to the other guys in the class, but not me. There were so many guys in that class who were stealing the girls from me. I hated watching them casually flirting with the girls. I hate them. Elliot seemed to feel that just because he desired girls since puberty and he himself hadn't been desired in return, he had the right to hate them. I'm the guy you should be going for, not those obnoxious slobs you love so much. I don't know why you're not attracted to me. I don't know what you don't see in me. But I'll make sure you all pay for it. I've concluded that females have a, a very flawed and perverted form of sexual attraction. Elliot's thoughts and fantasies were consumed with revenge, but they were just thoughts, until one day when his thoughts became real. Elliot was waiting in line behind a couple at a local Starbucks. Just Elliot being in the presence of love angered him so much that he followed them out to their car and threw hot coffee on them. He later repeat the assault on two female students. He was establishing a pattern, acquiring a taste for inflicting pain. Yes, I'm a shy, quiet guy, but I have good qualities to myself. I'm a gentleman. You know, I'm sophisticated. I'm polite. I have good values. And I can be fun, too, if they just give me a chance to open up. But girls never give me a chance because they're evil and cruel like that. Elliot believed his designer clothes and nice car all bought with his father's money would make up for his wholly deficient personality. I do everything I can to appear attractive to you. I dress nice. I'm sophisticated and magnificent. I have a nice car, a BMW. Well, it's nicer than 90% of the people in my college. Um, you know, I'm polite. I'm the ultimate gentleman. And yet, you girls, you never give me a chance. I don't know why. You know, I, I put a lot of effort into dressing nice. These, these sunglasses here they were $300. Giorgio Armani. So I'll put them on. See? In addition to his misogyny, Elliot was also a rabid racist often posting his vile views online. Specifically, he hated seeing blonde women with any man, he had a special disgust seeing them with men of a different color. I passed by this restaurant and I saw this black guy chilling with four hot white girls. He didn't even look good, 
Then later on in the day, I was shopping at Trader Joe's and saw an Indian guy with two above average white girls. What rage inducing sights did you guys see today? Don't you just hate seeing these things when you go out? It just makes you want to quit life. On the bodybuilding forums, Elliot would spew his disgust at men of Asian descent. When asked by one if a certain pair of shoes would help attract white women, Elliot told him, shoes won't help you get white girls. White girls are disgusted by you, silly little Asian. It's worth noting that Elliot himself is a part Asian descent, and his racism could very well be another sign and extension of his intense self-loathing. It's almost been a month since that traumatic day. The day I lost the lottery jackpot that I was meant to win. Elliot would spend the $1,000 a month allowance Peter gave him on designer clothes and lottery tickets, often driving over two hours to Arizona or Nevada just to buy more. I was going to be the record-breaking lottery winner of $656 million. I still can't come to terms with the fact that I didn't win. He came to believe that winning the lottery would solve all of his problems and would be the only way he could attract a woman. I should not be in this position right now. If I had won, then I would probably be driving one of my dream cars at this very instant, looking for a new mansion to buy. I would probably even have a girlfriend by now. That is how my life should be. Not this. Not this depression and suffering and loneliness. His clothes and car obviously weren't enough, and it didn't seem to occur to him to try to make money on his own through honest work. The lottery was his last chance. I dropped my classes with the conviction that I would return to college as a rich guy who could get all the girls. But every time Elliot lost, he considered it a personal affront to his sense of self, a conspiracy of the universe against him. I thought I had a chance to become rich very quickly. I thought I would win the lottery. It was meant to be. I can't believe I didn't win. This is so shattering. What do I do now? With all hope lost, he took a drive where he would confess his innermost thoughts to his camera phone, the only thing listening. Every time I drive through this place, I am overcome with rage. Because I see so many guys walking around with beautiful blonde girls, enjoying their lives. While I've lived here for, for more than two years in loneliness. No one's ever invited me to parties. No girls have been attracted to me. I've never had the pleasure of walking through this town with a beautiful girl on my arm. So many beautiful girls walking around here. But they would never give me a chance. See, look at that one. I just passed one. It would reject me at every turn. Here I am, Elliot Roger. Beautiful, magnificent gentleman. Though the girls around this town don't see it. They hang around with those slobs, those obnoxious, horrible, disgusting men. But they never give me a chance. That's why my life is so unfair. Oh look, even more houses full of obnoxious, college students right there. <sighs> this world does not make sense. Despite Elliot feeling like a victim himself, he held no empathy for anyone he deemed less attractive. Hot young sluts who would just reject me. And these, look at these douchebags right here. These assholes, these obnoxious little slobs. You see guys like this. Oh wait, no. Not guys like those. Those guys were ugly as fuck. It's a dangerous mixture of inferiority and superiority complexes, another clear trait of an undiagnosed narcissistic personality disorder. Ah, uh, police car. Whoa. God damn. I'm so glad that police car didn't stop me for holding up my cell phone. <laughs> I've already gotten a parking ticket this month. Notice how despite Elliot's antisocial traits, he still has a strong respect for authority and is highly concerned about getting a ticket from police. This would seem anathema to the strongman persona, yet upon closer examination, ties in strongly with his deep-seated insecurity. He most likely fears and respects police because he covets the power they possess. Look, that's the house I got beat up at when I walked in on a party. That was about almost a year ago now, back in August of 2013. 
One year later and everything Elliot felt he had to give the world had been rejected. Everything he ever wanted had been denied. The entire female gender must have something mentally wrong with them. To be so evil and cruel to me by starving me of love and sex, while they eagerly give it to other men. The only thing left to do was to take it. They are all mentally ill. They must all be punished, and I will be the one to punish them. His deterioration was complete. The only hope for a future rested in none at all, for Elliot or anyone who stood in his way. The girls are not attracted to me. And there's a major problem with that. A major problem. That's a problem that I intend to rectify. <laughs> I will not let this fly. It's an injustice that needs to be dealt with. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. Elliot seemed to have waited for the natural light to be just right for his final video. He was putting the time in to make his last statement a work of art. In the most cinematic of delusions, Elliot was preparing to drive off into the sunset. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. It's an injustice, a crime, because I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men instead of me, the supreme gentleman. I will punish all of you for it. <laughs> the contrast between Elliot's typical videos and when he played his evil character is stark and a clear reminder of the artificiality of his persona. I'll be a god, exacting my retribution and all those who deserve it. And you do deserve it, just for the crime of living a better life than me. Elliot showed signs of extreme narcissism combined with a complete lack of empathy. His stewing rage, along with an inability to maintain aggression, was a verifiable witch's brew of unchecked psychopathy. All you popular kids, you've never accepted me. All I've ever wanted was to love you and to be loved by you. I've wanted a girlfriend. I've wanted sex. I've wanted love, affection, adoration. But you think I'm unworthy of it. That's a crime that can never be forgiven. After the hours of hate Elliot had spewed in his videos, it sounds rather foreign to hear him speak of love and shared affection. However, there is evidence that he was capable of the emotion. Whether it was a facade or not, he showed affection towards his family, and in recent months had even taken steps to improve his relationship with his half-brother Jazz. But no drop of love was enough to subsume the fire of hate that had consumed him. While Elliot's plans were horrific enough, they were originally even worse. Along with the massacre he eventually carried out, he was also planning on killing his stepmother, Sumaya, and even Jazz. As with most of Elliot's actions in his short life, his reasons stemmed from petty jealousy. Jazz was a budding child actor, and Elliot claims Sumaya deliberately made him feel inferior to her biological son's success. Whether or not this is true can only be judged by Elliot's prior history, but considering his penchant for delusion isn't likely. After all of my most recent revelations, I've been feeling so trapped. It is so tragic how my life has fallen to such darkness. It is finally reaching its culmination, and I feel very overwhelmed and anxious. By this point, it was clear he had a complete psychic collapse, and what he does next will show its terrifying consequences. Even in the mass annals of American spree killings, his will be particularly fueled by psychotic rage. I am so godlike. Before uploading what became known as the Retribution video, Elliot edited out these last seconds, juxtaposed this godlike image he attempts to display with the real Elliot we've now come to know through his writings and video. The real Elliot is violent, cruel, self-loathing, pathetic. He is not godlike, and he will soon play god in the strictest sense. And in turn, I will deny all of you life. <laughs> it's only fair. I hate all of you.
The Retribution video was released shortly before the massacre, however, this was not originally the planned date. One month previously, April 26, while his father was out of town, Elliot had planned to kill Sumaya and Jazz. But luckily for the three, he came down with a cold and his father came home early. I have nothing to live for now. Nothing to live for but revenge. My revenge will be so sweet. It will be perfect, beautiful, glorious. Other videos showing signs of Elliot's mental decay were posted a week prior to the original date and were beginning to attract attention. When they began to be shared on Reddit, fellow students recognized Elliot's name. While most found the videos to be laughable or pathetic, others were concerned the figure on screen may be a ticking time bomb. Disturbingly, many others would find themselves relating to the whining self-pity, a trend that would become frighteningly widespread in years to come. Yes, I'm a shy, quiet guy, but I have good qualities to myself. I'm a gentleman. You know, I'm sophisticated. I'm polite. When his mother hadn't heard from him for several days, she searched his name online hoping to find information. Instead, she found the recent videos and the disturbing portrait of her son had painted. She contacted mental health authorities who informed police to conduct a welfare check in his apartment. I hate all of you. Humanity is a disgusting, wretched, depraved species. But upon arriving and talking to him, they claimed to have found Elliot to be an extremely polite young man and no threat to himself or to others. If they had investigated further, they would have uncovered his entire murderous plan and the weapons he purchased to make it happen. As savage as Elliot's actions were, his original plan was even more so. He would lure his victims inside the apartment one by one before brutally torturing them with knives and boiling water. He would then cut off their heads and throw them out the window of his moving car as he rampaged the streets of Isla Vista. But for this to work, he needed his roommates out of the picture, so he would lie in wait and kill them one by one as they entered the apartment throughout the day. 19-year-old George Chan was just a visiting friend of his roommates, but he would still become Elliot's first victim. He was attacked in the bathroom, stabbed 94 times in a fit of pure vengeful rage. Chen collapsed into the fetal position on the floor before the killer made a haphazard attempt at cleaning up the blood with paper towels. He would then wait for his roommates David Wang and Chen Hong, repeatedly stabbing them both before leaving their bodies face down covered in bed sheets and clothes. It's unclear what he was doing between his roommate's murder and the rampage on the streets of Isla Vista, but he was seen working on his laptop in the apartment building's parking lot around 8.30 p.m. At 9.17, the Retribution video would be uploaded and one minute later, the manifesto known as My Twisted World was sent en masse to his parents, counselor, and acquaintances, detailing the disturbed, rageful ideology as well as plan of attack. He listed every grievance, every wrong brought against him by humanity, reserving particular blame for women. Cruel treatment from women is ten times worse than from men. It made me feel like an insignificant, unworthy little mouse. When his therapist received the manifesto, he immediately phoned Elia's mother, Lai Chin, who watched the retribution video and tried to reach her ex-husband, Peter. Minutes ago, I finally checked my email. I saw this letter. It's from Elliot Roger, who's a Santa Barbara City College student. It's 141 pages. So when you get to the end, which is where I went to immediately, page 134, it's a very detailed attack they plan on taking in Isla Vista, including shooting people and driving a car to intentionally run over pedestrians and then shoot themselves. But as the mortified parents eventually rushed to Isla Vista, Little did they know that it was much too late, and had been for years. I am going to enter the hottest sorority house of UCSB. The killer drove to the Alpha Fist sorority house, where a locked door would potentially save dozens of lives. Even though he had been stalking the house for weeks, he seemingly didn't realize that a code was required to enter. He knocked for several minutes, but the girls refused to answer. Furious, he would now take out his rage on anyone within sight. He spotted three girls standing outside and began firing at them, killing 19-year-old Veronica Weiss and 22-year-old Catherine Cooper before wounding a third. Not long after the knocking ceased, the girls in the sorority heard the flurry of gunshots. Rushing to the window, they saw the victims lying injured or dead on the house's lawn. The third victim was heard on her phone, pleading to her mother, I'm going to die over and over again. What is that? A severe emergency? Uh, we have a shooting on Embarcadero del Norte. 
In Parkadero. Okay, we're on in Parkadero, don't I say? I go to Ala Vista. No, I know. We're on, like, what, what block or what's the nearest cross street from there? Uh, it is Segovia. Okay. Segovia and don't Did you actually see the person shooting the gun, or did you see what it made contact with, or did you I just hear it? I saw the car. You saw a car? Did it make contact with anybody? Yeah. Who? We have three girls, three women. That got, three they got girls. shot? Yes. Officers then responded to reports of multiple gunshots fired downtown into the Isla Vista Deli. But when they arrived, students nearby told them they thought it was fireworks. They then saw a crazed figure run across the parking lot and into a black car that proceeded to speed eastbound. 911, what's the address of the emergency? I'm at I need that place. You're, you're about to think somebody else is on the line. Okay. I don't know what happened. Okay. Were you injured? Were you injured? I'm injured. Okay, where are you? Somebody else is. We're at Ivy Deli and I was just uh Okay, you're at Ivy Deli and somebody shot? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I understand. Okay, I'm getting help started. Do you know how many people are hurt? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, this is a Hello? Police followed the screams of the Isla Vista Deli, where they found panicked students and 20-year-old Christopher Michaels Martinez, shot through the chest and killed almost instantly. The killer continued to drive around the college town, shooting at bystanders and running them over with his car, injuring multiple people. He shot a police officer, resulting in the first instance of returned fire, causing him once again to flee. I was shot at from a pseudo BMW, westbound from Alamo to Street. on progress. We got another gunshot. Shot fire! Shot fire! He continued firing at bystanders from his car, and several officers now returned fire. One bullet striking him in his upper left thigh. He fled yet again, but soon crashed into the back of a black jeep. Elliot's car was riddled with bullets and bleeding gasoline. With the officers shouted commands getting closer and his retribution as complete as it ever would be, Elliot was done. He put a bullet in his head. Surrounding him, police would find prescription pills, knives, three pistols, six empty 10-round magazines, 548 unspent rounds of ammunition, and his phone, containing over 200 selfies. My name's Sean, I'm an apartment manager in IV, like the apartment. Um, and I know something's going on in IV. I just got an email from one of the residents, and it's like, really disturbing and it's like okay there's been a there's, there's been a shooting in id no no i understand that but i got an email from a resident and it's like 141 pages long and it says like the life of elliot roger okay and at the end it talks about killing people okay yeah so, we uh we actually have somebody else what's your name as police began gathering facts it was only a matter of time before they found the horrors that awaited them inside the apartment in addition to the bodies of his roommates, they would also find several disturbing items that belonged, including a dagger, a sledgehammer, a print out of his manifesto, disturbing diary entries and drawings, and multiple knives. The diary appeared to have had entries removed and then taped back in, something its pages confirmed. The last entry, dated May 23, 2014, read, I had to tear some pages out because I feared my intentions would be discovered. I take them back together as fast as I could. This is it. In one hour, I will have my revenge on this cruel world. I hate you all. Die. His mattress had been stabbed and slashed, possible practice for his roommate's bodies, and the sheets were wrapped in the bloody clothing he used to kill them in. On his bed, a laptop was open to the words, Your video has been uploaded. There was a young girl laying right here, and she was, I could just tell immediately that she was gone. She, I, I saw a gunshot wound her abdomen and like on her side and also went to her head, uh, so you could tell she wasn't bleeding anymore, so that she was gone. During the mere eight minutes that the massacre took place, the town of Isla Vista would be forever changed. To most, Elliot Roger is now a sad, infuriating case of hatred gone unchecked, a life of privilege squandered by petty, insecure jealousy. To others like him, he's a hero, a sage, a pioneer of insult mass death who dared do what they only dream of. 
They somehow feel as if his actions took courage, when all they took was a particularly sad and deluded form of hate. The father of Adam Lanza now says that there are times he wishes his son had never been born. Do you ever feel that way? That's a really loaded question. Um, I... That's a loaded question, Barbara. A part of me says yes. And the reason is because he did an awful lot of harm to young men and young women who didn't deserve to die. And my son did it. Our son Christopher Martinez and six others are dead. Our family, our family has a message for every parent out there. You don't think it'll happen to your child until it does. Chris was a really great kid. Ask anyone who knew him. His death has left our family lost and broken.